Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Kari and today I will talk about all the books I read in December. I know this review is gonna be up a little bit late, but nonetheless, I'm very excited to talk about these books. I have to clarify that in each wrap up video, I will just mention a brief synopsis of what the book is about and then my experience reading it. I never say the stars that I gave them on Goodreads, but I'll leave the link of all of my Goodreads reviews in the description below in case you want to check that out. The books are in the order in which I read them and at the end of the video there's always a section of what I'm currently reading and my one book TBR for next month. Now let's start with the books. The first one is Small Spaces by Catherine Arden. I plan to read this in October but that didn't happen and I started it in November but finished it in the first days of December. This story is about a girl named Oli she lost her mom recently and she is going through that period of grief and one day she steals a mysterious book from a woman where she discovers a ghost story about cornfields and scarecrows. Then the adventure begins when she goes on a school trip to a farm in her town and she starts seeing that the ghost story she read about might have actually happened. The premise was very interesting, I have to admit, and the Halloween and spooky aspect of it called me. Also, a lot of booktubers who read middle grade books recommended this book and said that it was great and spooky and perfect for Halloween, so obviously I wanted to read it more. I'll mention the great aspects of the book, the ones that I loved, and one of those was the characters. I think the protagonist was very great, she was a badass and I admire her a lot. The characters and the group dynamic that they had, it was great. The atmosphere was great too and the cover, I love the cover. Um, you have to admit it, it's very beautiful. But also there were a lot of things that I didn't like and one of those was that the book wasn't creepy or as spooky as everyone said it was or at least not for me. The plot conveniently fixed itself. I felt like a lot of the conflict was sorted out very easily for the characters and I didn't like that. So in conclusion, I would recommend this book. It's not a bad book, it's very well written, but I guess it wasn't that fantastic for me as for a lot of people. <laughs> I recommend it more to a younger audience, which is the actual audience for this book because it is a middle grade or for anyone who wants just a Halloween read. I want your opinion on this book if you have read it and your opinion on the series because those covers are amazing and just seeing them makes me want to read the books, but the first one wasn't that amazing, so I don't know. I'm in conflict right now. I'm still deciding if I want to continue with the series or not, so please tell me if you think it gets better. The next book is Splintered and I feel like I talked about this a lot because it's in my video of the best and worst books of 2020 and spoiler alert is on the worst side. <laughs> this story is about a descendant of Alice Liddell, which is the inspiration for Alice in the books. And this descendant, Alisa, has a curse. Her whole family has had a curse, well, the women in her family, and she has to go to Wonderland to break this curse. The premise was great, as I said in that video, but the worst thing about this book was the romance, the love triangle, which was weird and very unnecessary, and the protagonist, because she was very dumb. I didn't get her character, I guess. I didn't like her, so no. I was planning to read the whole trilogy, but obviously I won't. <laughs> it was one of the worst books. Also, the cover was so appealing to me. Um, I saw the cover and I was intrigued by it, but my sister told me that's the most horrible cover that I've seen. <laughs> I didn't understand why and then as I hated the book, now I kind of hate the cover, like I understand now my sister, but at first I was like, no, you're crazy, this is a beautiful cover. What do you think? Because <laughs> I liked it at first. I didn't connect with this book at all and it was a shame because it was about Wonderland, which is a setting that I love, but here it didn't work out. The next book is actually two books in one and are two of my favorite books of all time. This is Alice in Wonderland and Through the Looking Glass by Lewis Carroll. I counted this as one book for Goodreads, but it's actually the two books in here. Both are very short and magical and I just love everything. The atmosphere, the weird characters and the nonsense. This story is about Alice, a little girl who falls into a rabbit hole and gets into Wonderland this place where nothing makes sense and 
everything is not what it seems. We follow two different adventures in these two books, um, but in both she encounters very peculiar characters along the way and a lot of things that happen to her don't make any sense. <laughs> And I love that. I really can't choose which one I love more. Both have great aspects that I love, but also both have moments that aren't that great. So it is a great balance in both books. So that's why I can't choose. I don't think these books are perfect and they are definitely not for everyone. I think that a lot of people will not like them just because nothing makes sense but that is the charm of the books in my opinion that's why they are for me and why i love them so much and why i will read them again in the future the next book is called tilly and the book wanderers by anna james and is the first one in the series pages and co this book is about a girl named matilda tilly she lives with her grandparents and their grandparents own a bookshop that is called pages and co tilly discovers that book characters start appearing in the bookshop and then she learns about this kind of book magic that it's called book wandering that allows you to go inside books. I loved this book. I think the premise was amazing and the execution was amazing too. The problem that I tend to have with books that I don't like is that the premises are amazing and I imagine that they will be epic and then the execution is horrible. But here the premise and the execution were both amazing. I loved the idea of book wandering, of getting to know your favorite characters, of entering your favorite stories and Tilly here does that and she also has many great interactions with her grandparents and with Alice and Anne which are two parts that I truly truly loved about the book because those characters are characters that I love so much you know for Alice in Wonderland and Anne of Green Gables so it was great to see how they interacted with Tilly. This book has not only those classic characters but other ones and it has a British feeling because the author is British. It also has references to Harry Potter which I loved. I like the protagonist Tilly. I think she went through um, a range of emotions throughout the novel and I loved seeing her how she managed all of the trouble and all of the drama that happened in this book and I also liked Oscar a lot I think he was such a nice guy and a great friend this book has some plot twists that some were great some were kind of predictable but I think they will be <laughs> amazing and shocking for kids the next book I read was A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens this book is a classic and I wanted to read it in Christmas or during Christmas in December and I did it. I'm so glad I did it because I love the story a lot. This is about Ebenezer Scrooge, a grumpy old man who hates everything and everyone, which is sometimes relatable, I have to admit. He is visited by three spirits, the spirit of Christmas past, of Christmas present and of Christmas yet to come. Along the journey, he reflects on his life and learns to be a better person. I think this story is so powerful. It talks about the meaning of Christmas, but also the meaning of life and about redemption. The feeling of this book is very festive and atmospheric, like you could feel Christmas. You read this book and you feel Christmas. I don't know how to explain that better, but that's what happened to me. I loved Scrooge as a character. I think it was one of the best examples of a redemption arc and it had many great scenes and lines and he was hilarious too. Hilarious to read, obviously, not to interact, but yeah, I love him. I have to admit that some parts were slow paced. They weren't very addictive, but it is very rewarding once you finish it, you feel the message of the story and I feel that is very deep and spiritual and that's the greatest aspect of this book in my opinion so I recommend it for everyone it was a little bit hard to read for me because English is not my first language and I read it in English but it still it was very enjoyable and great and amazing and I loved it and the last book that I will talk about is Tilly and the Lost Fairy Tales which is the second book in Pages and Co and this was a disappointment because the first book was amazing, the second book wasn't, I didn't really like it. The reason why I didn't like it was because it was so predictable. Yeah, that's the main reason. I knew how all the things were going to play out and 
that's not interesting. I mean, why are you gonna read something that you know everything about? <laughs> I feel the problem was that the story was so basic, unlike the first book. I don't know how this happened, but it happened. Also, the characters made very impulsive, dumb decisions, and those dumb decisions were the things that move the plot forward and I don't like that. I hate that in books because it's like someone is saying that this is going to be dangerous, that you could get killed and you just decide to do exactly that thing. Why would you do that? Why would you do that? <laughs> I think that's more a pet peeve that I have in books or in media in general. And the worst thing was that those actions actually weren't that dangerous in the end. Like they seem to be very life or dead and then something is explained a little bit more and then you say like, oh, but that wasn't actual danger they were in. So <laughs> I, I, I just, I didn't like that. I have to say that the world building was better but I have mixed feelings about it because some explanations seem very reasonable and real and credible and I thought, yeah, this is great, but some explanations were there just to serve the plot and I didn't like that. They felt um, not realistic even for the fantasy world, so yeah, I, I have mixed feelings. I still don't know if I will continue with the series, the ending was underwhelming in my opinion and I don't know if there's gonna be more than three books or only a trilogy, so I'm, I'm confused and I I don't know, still. Now it's time for the second part of the video and I'm currently reading just two books. I haven't made a lot of progress with them always at the beginning of the year, I tend to read less. But anyway, I'm really excited because these two books are ones that I wanted to read for years. And the first one is The Sword of Shannara, the first in the original Shannara Chronicles trilogy. I'm very, very excited. I'm loving what I've read so far. And the second one is the first book in the Wendy Darling trilogy, which is called Stars by Colleen Oakes. I'm listening to that on audiobook and I'm also loving it. And well, my TBR for next month, it feels very awkward to say next month when it is this month because I'm recording this uh, in January now. But well, my TBR for January has to be to finish those books. I won't add any other because as I said, I'm not reading very fast right now, so I don't know if I will be able to finish even those two books, but I hope so. Well, that was it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please give it a like and share it with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more content about books, TV shows, and movies each week. Here in the screen, I will leave two videos that I recommend you to watch, and I will see you next time.